Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jan Clothier of Thinking Stamping and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in New Zealand. And today I thought I'd share with you how I made this sweet little um, circular Christmas card. You probably can't see it in the video, but it just sits beautifully and it's just a bit different because it's, it's circular. So I thought I'd share with you how I made that card for today's video. Um, I'll share with you first up what we need to make it and I used this bundle, the Joy of Noel bundle from the September to December um, 2023 mini catalogue. This is a little photopolymer stamp set and it comes with this little bundle and that's what we're using today. Um, if you see anything today in today's video that you would like to add to your craft room collection and you live in New Zealand then please shop with me, there's a link to my online store in the video description um, below. Okay, so that's the sort of like the hardware that we're using. But of course, there is actually one other very special piece of hardware we're using, which is how do we get the round shape? Well, in that mini catalog, there is this little set called Deckled Circles. And even though I'd read the book and I'd read the read the catalogue and I'd seen, you know, the dimensions of it, I was quite surprised when they arrived to discover that they go all the way up to this um to this size here, which is something like uh, 15 centimetres, so 6 inches, it's, it's huge, and there are 14 of them. And so I've already taken out the ones that I've used for today's card, as you can see if you count from the centre, let's just organise that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I'm using circles 8, 9 and 10 for this card. And the reason that I picked these dimensions over any other dimension that I could have used, because I could have used any three circles, um, is I picked those sizes because if you make this card, it will, it's, it will still fit inside a standard envelope and you don't have to do a custom envelope. Obviously, if you want to make it bigger, um, then by all means use larger circles, but you will have to custom make the envelope. Okay, so what sort of paperwork do we need to go with all of this delicious hardware? Well, starting with the base... Um, and I've used thick white cardstock on this one. 11 and a half centimetres wide, 23 centimetres um, long and scored at 11 and a half. Now, if you are a metrics person, you'll notice that 23 centimetres is actually wider than a piece of A4 paper. So you can cut it out of, you can, in order to be more economical, just cut it the width of a piece of card. But you'll see that what happens is if you do that, you get less of a circle, you get more of a squashed circle. So if you're being economical and you don't mind your circle being less circular and more squashed, then by all means do that. But I'm thinking that this is the kind of card you make special for someone rather than whacking out like 50 of them. So I didn't mind being a little bit extravagant with the card. So I have cut this. 11 and a half, 23 scored at 11 and a half. And that's going to make my base. And of course you could do any colour. Now, and when we cut that, what we're going to do with this is we're going to score it. And we're going to take the largest circle and when we run it through the die cutting machine, we're just going to do it like that. So when it cuts, you're going to get... Um, a hinge motion. So I've got one here cut in red. So it comes out like that and then it opens up and you've got that hinge which lets you make the card base. Okay so that's what the largest circle is for and that's the only time that we use that largest of the three circles. Now then I've come down to the middle sized of the three that I had. So you need a piece of gold foil and that is 11 and a, oh sorry no it's not it's 10 and a half square so 10 and a half centimeters and then I have cut out of that a gold foil circle and then I have taken that and I have run it through this the distressed tile 3d embossing folder which is also out of the same catalog but you could use any kind of distressed um, ornate looking um, embossing folder to make that circle with. So that's with the middle sized circle and using the same one, the same die, you take a piece of basic white, again 10 and a half um, square and you cut that out and that is the piece that we're going to put on the inside. And then you also need a piece of basic white that is 10 centimetres and that is cut with the smallest of the circles. 
so and there's only one of those so you cut one with the smaller circle which is for the front you cut two with the middle size circle a gold foil and a white one for the inside and the largest of the three circles you've taken out of decal dies is for you to cut the card base with now in addition to that you need a little piece of gold foil because we're going to cut the letters using this die here so the noel die which matches that beautiful little noel stamp but when it cuts out it cuts out the letters separately so what i've done is i have taken those those noels oops and i've dropped the end on the floor so i just have to retrieve Okay, so I've taken them, and after I cut them out of that gold foil, I ran also ran those through my 3D embossing folder. This one, I just popped them in there, ran it through the machine, and so now I've got these beautifully little embossed um, Noels. Now, rather than having to deal with a whole bunch of, you know, little mini dimensionals trying to dimensional them up, what I did then was I took just a piece of thick white cardstock, and I did the same thing, and I cut myself some Noels, and I'm just going to layer those up, and that will save me having to deal with trying to dimensional up um, those letters when I'm doing my final assembly. So that is all the bits and pieces that we need. And remember, if you're using those decal edged circles to, to do this, and really you need them because they're the only circles that are large enough, they were numbers... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They were numbers eight, nine, and ten from the center that I used. Right, so on to, so we'll just pop those away. Now I'm going to go a little bit rogue here on my assembly. Um, when I was making this card um, earlier today, I hummed and hard about giving it a red base. And so I, cut, I already had this red base cut. So I thought, oh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it using a real red base and see which one looks best. So everything else is going to be the same. But instead of using thick white cardstock, I've just used real red. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my, um, my embossed gold circle. Whoops. And that is not what I ever want to see when I'm dealing with foil. I never want to see a blob of glue. So I'm going to get my sponge and just pat that out. Because, you know, foil and glue, they are not friends. And it is not good to have oozy glue around gold foil. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that there. And just leave him to the side that away because we've used it. I'm going to just very quickly assemble these so they're ready for when we need them. Just going to glue So now I've got my layered up uh, Noels. Now if you wanted even more dimension, you could cut yourself an extra layer and give yourself two layers of plain underneath and then they'd sit up even more. But we'll just pop those over there for now because we don't need them straight away. Now that leaves us with our two decal circles, the little one here, which is for the front, and the smaller one here, which is for the inside. Now what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to take this small little wreath this small little wreath and we're going to ink it up with tuxedo black and I'm just going to stamp them on okay and you know I'm going to go count to ten so the ink's got time to transfer one two three that one and while I'm at it I'm going to do this one because I'm going to do the same deal on the inside so I might as well stamp them both at the same time one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so we'll just pop that over there for now Okay, now I coloured those using Stampin' Blends. Now, because I've got a real red base, I'm going to use real red. And that is, in fact, what I used over there as well. I used real red. I used um, Old Olive, a mixture of light and dark Old Olive for 
these leaves and then I used Granny Apple Green for the holly leaves. So we'll just quickly do that. Okay, so when you've coloured that in, the next thing I'm going to do is I have used another background stamp to add a bit more colour into the design. Now you don't have to do this, but I quite liked the idea of just adding in a bit more colour so that the gold letters had a little bit more to stand out against. So I've taken uh, that little texture stamp there and some granny apple green and we're going to stamp that. But before I do, I'm going to get out my old mate the post-it note just because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to bother making a mask. I just don't want too much of that stamp to go over that wreath. So I'm just going to pop a post-it note there to kind of give it a bit of protection. And then I'm just going to ink that up. And I'm going to then just do a bit of a stamp there. Now, if you want, if you thought that's a bit dark, you could always stamp it off a bit first. Okay, so I've just got a little bit more texture there in the background. We'll get rid of that open ink pad because I do feel slightly nervy when I've got an open ink pad on the desk that I'm not using. Right, so now we can attach this. Now, the trickiest, probably the trickiest bit of this whole card is getting it straight. Because it opens at the top and it sort of has a little rocky on the bottom, you do want to make sure you've got it straight. So what I've done is I'm going to use, sorry if my hair's getting in the picture, um, I'm going to line up with my grid paper in an effort to help keep myself straight, uh, which will become particularly important when it's time to add the letters. So I'm going to add this in here. I want it to be kind of vertical and I don't want to muck around with getting too much glue on that foil so I don't want to muck around with my placement too much but I am going to press it now because I'm attaching a flat surface to that textured gold foil and I want to make sure it gets some traction the glue gets some traction so I'm just going to give it some pressure longer than I normally would just to make sure that it is attaching itself where I want it Okay, now the next thing to do is to take our little Noels, which as I said, if you want them taller, you can easily add in another layer of blank white in behind it. So just have a little play around with the placement about, you know, exactly where you would like them to be. Got to make sure they fit. Don't want the gold too close to the gold. So just, you know, have a wee play with placement. And then you have to put your big girl pants on and be a bit brave because, as I said, you don't want the Noel to look wonky crooked when you've done it. So we'll just take a little punt on that. So a bit of glue, a bit of glue. Get my tweezers. And as you're doing this, constantly thinking about, is that straight? Is this straight? Is it where I want it? I reckon this is, as I said, the toughest bit of this otherwise actually pretty simple card. Okay, just like that. We'll pop that one here. And my little mental antennae are still going, oh please be straight, please be straight, please be straight. Okay. Pop that one on, bit of glue. Again, not so much glue that you get ooze. You do not want oozy. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm liking the look of this um, coloured base over the white base. I guess it's a, a matter of personal preference. It'll be interesting to see what it quite looks like when it's really all finished. Okay, no well. And I'm glad that I put that little bit of extra green stamping in behind. I think it would be a bit, uh, bit insipid without that. Now... I could just leave it like that. I mean, I'm tempted to leave it like that, but I, mean, I do have customers and class people who just always, always want some bling. So I'm just going to add some simple champagne rhinestones on there. But if you thought that that's a bit of overkill, then by all means, 
do not use them. It's entirely a personal preference deal. And perhaps just one over there. Okay. Now the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to take that circle that's the same size as the gold one and we're going to open up and we are going to pop it in the middle and then we will be all done. Now don't forget as I said if you see anything that I've used in the making of this card and you'd like to add it to your craft stash and you live in New Zealand then please shop with me there's a link to my online store in the video description below. Okay, so there we are. There's my two circular Noel cards. They are absolutely identical, apart from the fact that one is on a thick white card base and one is on a real red card base. And I'll be interested to know which one you think um, is the nicer of the two. Anyway, I'm more than happy. To, I'm always happy to answer questions, and you can reach me through the um, through my blog and my website and my Facebook page. And the details of that are in the video description below, and they're also going to pop up shortly on the end cards. Uh, if you've liked what you've seen and you haven't subscribed, please um, do so so you don't miss anything new that I do. And above all else, everyone, happy stamping!